As we get older, our gene expression starts to downregulate. It's just a fact of life. But something like methylene blue, that can actually help with gene expression. So it's a real game changer. It's gaining a lot of popularity recently. So first of all, I'm gonna go over its purported health benefits for longevity. And then I'm gonna go into my own personal use of it. Methylene blue has been shown to upregulate mitochondrial biogenesis and function. You know, they're like the powerhouses in all your cells. So it increases energy production and it helps regulate the electron transport chain, increasing mitochondrial efficiency. And as you get older, this becomes more and more imbalanced. And I might add, I do a lot for mitochondria and over time you do notice it. You're less reliant on caffeine for say as a pre-workout. Methylene blue modulates genes involved in your body's own natural antioxidant defenses like uh, SOD2, which is super oxide dismutase, and the other one is catalase, and these steadily go down, say after the age of 30. I do a lot for them currently, but yeah, methylene blue is another one in my stack. And by reducing oxidative stress, that's across your whole body, protecting your DNA, proteins, lipids, it's just a, it's an ongoing thing as you get older. So following on with oxidative stress in regards to neuroprotection, methylene blue it can activate the NERF2 pathway, and this activates certain uh, neuron protecting genes. So in turn, by decreasing neuroinflammation, methylene blue could improve cognitive function and memory, particularly those with Alzheimer's. Methylene blue can influence the expression of genes involved in apoptosis, you know, cell death. And yeah, this is something particularly in neurodegenerative diseases, or even those who have, say, abused alcohol or medications that are very neurotoxic drugs. It's been reported that methylene blue can enhance the autophagy process, you know, clearing out senescent cells, you know, dysfunctional uh, damaged cells. And this is very much a hallmark of aging, you know, that decreased autophagy. So in particular, it impacts the genes uh, LC3 and ATG5. It can even reduce neuroinflammation by suppressing the pro-inflammatory cytokines TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. And this is something I do measure. Another exciting part relating to the brain is methylene blue can increase the expression of the gene BDNF, which uh, encodes for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I do a lot of content on this, so that increases synaptic plasticity. And I think we can all agree that goes down with age. If you've got someone, say, learning a language when they're 15 or 60, the difference is huge. Or another good example is if you've got a 15 year old learning to become a racing driver versus a 60 year old, who do you think is gonna learn much faster? It's a no brainer. Methylene blue can even influence metabolic pathways, modulating those genes involved in glucose uptake and lipids. And yes, yeah, so that can improve those genes, you know, that are involved in insulin regulation, which over time even influences brain health. They call Alzheimer's now type three diabetes. It's just such a common thing that, uh, you know, insulin resistance in the brain. So I personally use methylene blue once a day, just doing five milligrams in the morning. Some people do higher, they do it twice a day. I think it depends on your needs for doing it how complicated your supplement routine already is. I mean, I do a lot for BDNF already. I already do things to increase that super oxide dismutase and catalase too. And yes, yeah, so that's why over time I may adjust the dosing. Uh, depends on, say, I, I mentioned that I mentioned that uh, inflammatory cytokine interleukin-6. So it's been steadily going down for me, but if it starts a flat line, then I can look to review my dose of methylene blue. It's just because, yeah, otherwise, you know, if you're doing so many different things, then, uh, you know, you could, it could be overkill. And yeah, another example is, yeah, say I do things for improving my insulin sensitivity. I take a strong diabetic drug, empagliflozin. So uh, if you're just doing, a, if you have a very simple supplement protocol, then maybe doing a higher dose of methylene blue is more beneficial it depends on what you're taking already so i'm doing methylene blue i do it one month off one month on as i mentioned i'm doing all kinds of other things to improve the gene expression of those ones i've previously mentioned that's why I, some people might do it continuously or they might do it say on weekdays but for myself because my routine is so complex that i feel like just doing it like on cycles just to give those genes different pathways of being expressed so I get my methylene blue from Swiss Chems. I've been really happy with their products. I've been using them for quite a while. I even did an HPLC test on another one. I use a peptide called Epitalon. So if you're interested in getting methylene blue, my discount code is TM10 for 10% off in the pinned comment down below. And yeah, I'd like to hear if there's any feedback with using this compound. 
I think the dose that I'm using, because I'm doing all kinds of things for boosting mitochondrial biogenesis, it's, uh, it's harder for me to notice at these low doses, but I'd be interested to hear of anyone running at higher doses. I've even heard of people doing IV drips of methylene blue. So yeah, yeah, do comment down below if you've got any reported benefits from it. So if you like that, then check out this video here on the peptide GHKCU, which uh, modulates the expression of 1000 genes. It's a staggering amount. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.